Thank you so much for saying yes to serving here at St. Luke's and sharing your gifts with our children and youth. My name is Crystal Hensley and I'm the special needs coordinator here. Some children and youth on Sunday mornings will have buddies assigned to them so they can participate in programming alongside their peers. These high schoolers and adults are trained volunteers and will be with their partner children throughout the duration of the service to help the child however needed in participating in the activities with their peers. Some children or youth may not have buddies assigned to them, but may need special attention. In kids ministry, um, many or some children will have a notation on their name tag for allergies or behaviors or medical concerns, but it's not always noted. Sometimes kids are having off days or are new to our church and just need special attention in that moment. Um, we're also seeing children and youth returning to church after being away from groups during COVID and needing to learn or relearn skills in following directions and being part of a group with others. I want to offer you a few strategies on responding to behaviors, um, including disruption, non-compliance, and high energy, because these are behaviors you may see during your time at Kids Church or um, use small groups. The first thing uh, you could try, get to know the child. The stronger the relationship, the more likely the child will respond positively to you. You can also better play off the child's areas of interest and things that they're good at. The child will trust you and feel you are truly vested in them. Another thing you could do is offer choices. Children and youth like to feel in control, but not all choices result in positive outcomes. If a child is stuck and unable to follow directions, you can offer two choices that would be appropriate. An example for a younger child might be, Joey, we're getting ready to walk down to the treehouse for our lesson. When we get down there, would you like to sit next to Miss Sarah? Or would you like to sit next to your friend Jacob? For youth, you might say something like, we are preparing to respond to this discussion question. You can either write down your thoughts, draw a picture, or raise your hand to share out with others. Make sure all the options you offer are ones you're okay with a child actually choosing. Another strategy, you can offer a break or more time. If a child is feeling overwhelmed, the child may need a few moments to collect thoughts or calm down. You can show a timer um, as a visual that would be helpful. You can also have the child sit in a certain area of the classroom away from others and less stimulating. For older children, you can offer a break to the restroom or drinking fountain for a moment away from the group. If a child is showing aggression, only offer a break away from the group if they can be accompanied by an adult for close supervision. Another strategy you can try, remember there is always an underlying cause to a child's behavior. It's safe to assume that children want to do their best and meet expectations, but sometimes things get in the way for them. For example, this could include anxiety, trauma, lack of exposure to church or group settings, um, ADHD, medical needs, physical limitations, Basic needs like sleep, food, and feelings of safety can also be compromised by our children, which can most definitely affect their ability to be their best selves during Sunday mornings. Other strategies you will find are in the special needs toolbox. So for Kids Church, these are little bins located in each classroom in the cabinet labeled Sunday School. For youth, these can be found in the office area with the caddy for your small group. There's little fidget items in there. Some Individuals may have a little extra energy and just need a little fidget item for an outlet to their energy so they can better stay calm and focused during um, the activities going on. Make sure that kids know these items should help them stay focused and participate. If not, it's not a good fit for them. It should not be distracting. Uh, another strategy, ask. Ask for recommendations. Ask before helping. Some children, especially our older ones in youth programming, they know strategies that work and don't work for them. Many also want to be as independent as possible, so it's important to ask before jumping in to help as not to offend an individual who is capable but may just need a little extra time to complete a task. The last strategy for you is to call me, Crystal Hensley. I'm on channel two on the radio Sunday mornings. Um, I can also be reached by phone or text 317-939-1544. You're welcome to add it to your phone. As you get to know children and youth, you may encounter patterns of behavior that are concerning. I would invite you to remember we are all part of the body of Christ, wonderfully made to do His work. Each child and youth has a purpose and we're called to love on them uniquely, even if that means reframing our perspective or approach. I think keeping this in mind helps us focus on solution-based conversations to help the child continue to be part of our church experience. Even when trying some of these strategies I propose, you might still see the child is having trouble during their time with you at church. 
Um, some things to keep in mind for these instances, if you have some one-off behaviors that are not typical for that individual child, I would encourage you to reach out to the adults of that child or youth. But for patterns that are behavior that are more extreme and put the child's positive church experience at risk, reach out to a staff member. That could be Heather or Travis in youth, or Amy and Sarah in kids ministry. They can pass along any concerns to me, or you could also directly reach out to me, Crystal Hensley. What I then do is observe the child and talk with the child's adults to offer strategies or changes to their environment to better support that individual child based on their specific needs. Um, I will then follow up with staff and volunteers on these conversations and propose strategies so you know what was discussed. If you're communicating with a child's adults, focus on the good. For every concern communicated, I would challenge you to share at least two positive behaviors the child exhibits during their time with you. If parents only hear the negative, they may be discouraged from coming at all to church so they can avoid these challenges, especially if the family's already facing challenges in different areas like school and sports. We need everyone's help to make our church a place of safety, love, and community. You are such a blessing to these children and their families, and we so appreciate your time with them. Thank you for being here and being such a positive impact. Please reach out with any questions.